To binge or not to binge? That was the question in July and my answer ended up being to binge. I watched so many films and TV shows in July and I can't wait to share them with you guys. So let's do this. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Massa and I post brand new videos every week. So make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. So let's get into some of my favorite and some of my okay-ish film and TV choices that I watched in July. We're gonna start with Disney Plus. And as I'm sure everyone is aware, in July, we got Hamilton and Frozen 2 on Disney Plus, and they are both incredible. So Frozen 2, I hadn't watched it, and this was the first time watching it, and it is so beautiful. I love the elemental magic in it, and the storyline, and it's just, and I'm gonna say this out loud for the first time, I think it's better than the first one. In fact, I think it's much better than the first one. Like, I really enjoy, like, the self-discovery story of it, and it kind of teaches, like, kids and adults the importance of communication with the whole, like, Kristoff and Anna miscommunication that goes on, and it's just so nice to have Elsa come to the thing that she comes to. This is me trying to not do spoilers, even though the film came out a year ago. So yeah, it's a great, great cartoon slash film and I loved it and would highly recommend. So next one is Hamilton and Hamilton is a musical that I've been hearing so many good things about for so long and I really wanted to watch it but of course it's on in London which is pretty far away and it's so exciting. Expensive, which is why I love the fact that it's now on Disney Plus because so many people can watch it and it's made one of the most popular musicals and shows that would not be accessible to a lot of people really accessible and I love that because I do think that musicals and theatres should be a lot more accessible for everyone and not just people that live in certain areas or people that have loads of money to spend on theatre tickets. But it is such a brilliant musical. I love the story of it because I didn't know any of that story beforehand. Like, American independence is not something that I've ever studied or looked into. And the songs are incredible. I've been singing them pretty much on a daily basis since I watched it at the beginning of July. My boyfriend does not like musicals and he hasn't even watched Hamilton, but he sings along to the songs because of how much I've been playing the soundtrack. So I would definitely say it's probably one of my favorite musicals at the minute and it's really really worth a watch. The next film I watched was The Kissing Booth 2 and that was on Netflix. Now that came out towards the end of July and I'd seen the first film maybe a few months ago and I had mixed feelings like I do enjoy the weird teen rom-com situations that Netflix keeps churning out but this one was not my favorite and I watched the second one just to see like what are they going to do with this story where's it gonna go like obviously like there's a love triangle which we know from the trailer so that's not a spoiler and i'm not going to tell you which one l who by the way is not a good character like she is a bad bad person there is zero communication between l and noah who are our main characters and the couple in this thing and there's zero communication between them there's zero trust between them and neither of them are like good people so it's just a really weird film and somehow somehow they are making a third film that's already been shot and is getting released next year now I don't know what on earth this is going to be about or how they're going to stretch these stories out any further than they already have, but you can bet that I will watch the third one because I have to. Like, how do you stop watching these films? They're not the best, 
but you still want to watch them. Why? I don't know. So if you've got time to kill and just want something in the background that's pretty chill, Kissing Booth 2 is probably going to be one of those films. We are now going to move on to TV shows and I think that all of them were on Netflix. First TV show that I've been watching, it spans more than July, but I just wanted to mention it in this because it's brought me so much joy. And that is RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars Season 5. Now, I really enjoyed season five and some of the people on there, like I've been absolutely loving. Jujube is incredible and love her so much. Shea Coulee is an absolute queen. And the drama I've been enjoying, um, I think it was, in fact, I'm not gonna tell you who the drama involves in case you haven't seen it for some bizarre reason, go and watch it. Like nothing brings me more joy than any of RuPaul's Drag Race ever. But this season was particularly good and as I said, Shea Coulee is just a dream. Love, 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 love. Next up is New Girl. Now this is my first time round re-watching it and I watched it so long ago that I'd forgotten some of the stuff that happens in it and it was so cute re-watching everything and seeing it all happen again and it's such a lovely show and everything's so sweet and it's just really chill it's almost like the same vibes as friends it really gives me friends vibes and the group of them together are just so lovely and i really really enjoyed re-watching it i want to be in my life a jessica day but I think I'm definitely more of a Nick Miller. If you know, then you know what I mean. But I think I might be more of a Nick Miller. But I'm cool with that. I am chill. Next up is a TV show that I heard so much about for so long that I finally caved in and decided to give it a go. And that is Shit's Creek on Netflix. All of these are on Netflix. I don't know why I keep saying Netflix. I didn't think I would like it, but I ended up being so obsessed with this show and I watched it all so quickly. And they are the most dysfunctional family dynamic that I think I've ever seen, probably ever seen in anything ever. And it was brilliant. I just think it's written brilliantly. The characters are brilliant. They're so dysfunctional and selfish and the like story arc and the characters go through so much. And it is just absolutely delightful. It's really funny. And I really enjoyed all of the characters throughout it, like all of them. And then you find out that three of the cast members are actually related, which I didn't know this until doing research and stuff after I watched it. And I just could not believe that they were all related. But yeah, talented family and whatnot must be good for them. But I think on this show, my favorite character has to be Moira Rose. Moira Rose is brilliant, she is delightful, and it scares me a little bit because I feel like that's my future, the weird bitter actor, but I just, let's just not think about that too much. Yep. And the next TV show that I ended up watching was one that I thought I wouldn't like very much. And I only watched it because there was a lot of hype on social media from the people that I follow about it. And it ended up being really good. And I think it might be a new genre that I would like to watch more things in. And that is Cursed, which is one of the newer TV shows that have come out at, towards the end of July. And it's sort of like a high fantasy TV show. You've got the fair folk in it and it's got fairies and magic and it's sort of like a prequel slash retelling of the Arthur, Sword in the Stone, Merlin, Lady of the Lake. All of those stories sort of like merged together and it is so good. Like all of the characters are so good. I love them throughout. However, the weeping monk is my boy. I'm just saying The Weeping Monk is delightful. I need a season two of it to be like put into production immediately, you know, after the world stops 
doing whatever it is doing. I need, I need this pandemic to go away. The only issue that I had with this TV show is that it ended on a giant cliffhanger and you're like, what is actually happening? And I have my theories, obviously I have my theories, but I just wish that there was more of a resolution to the season rather than it being a giant cliffhanger because I don't know if they will end up doing a season two of it. And I really wish I'd gotten more answers before the season ended. And especially with everything going on in the world right now, I know things are back to filming and they're socially distancing filming, but I just wish that we had more answers. But of course, how would they have known that there was gonna be a pandemic and they might not film for a lot longer than they anticipated? So I feel like I rambled about Cursed a lot, but if you like high fantasy, like Game of Thrones vibes with magic and sword fights and battles and everything's really epic, then I think you will like Cursed. So give that a watch and let me know what you guys think. And if you know any TV shows that are like similar vibes to that, then let me know in the comments below because that is something that I think I wanna watch more of. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing and I make new videos every week. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.